Hi, I'm Cassie Robertson, Brand Ambassador with Kenra Professional, and today we're here to go over the Artistic Collection Hotel California. So before we get started, let's walk through our agenda, we'll cover questions as needed, and then we will go into our model demonstration. So our agenda for today starts with our elements of design. We will then move into our Hotel California overview. From there, we'll go into a demonstration of either the Malibu Tides or the Hollywood Allure Technique. I'll actually walk you through both of those and we will do a model application of one of them. We will go over our five easy steps to color formulation. Then, we'll be, we'll go, then we will actually do the model application. From there we'll do a little bit of our foundation elements and color support products. We will do our model finish and then we will do a little bit of question and answer time. So let's get started. Our elements of design are Kinder's signature guide to hair color application. And what this does is it supports our five easy steps or less to color formulation by uniting the technical application with the inspiration and formulation of the new lines. So it, our, our little booklet here helps you a lot with that. It walks you through the technical application of it, but it also helps you to formulate. So you know that this formulation is completely available to you and the application is. So it's really an easy way to transfer it into the salon and then you can cut it up and make it fit the client that you need it to fit. So elements of design is where artistry meets ease for us. So these little guys literally make life so easy and it really helps you to get a little more creative behind the chair, which then excites our clients that we're doing something new. So, who can tell me what the foundation color represents in our elements of design? Our foundation color represents 75% of the overall formulation, total color. So 75% of that head of hair is going to be our foundation color. From there, we have an anchor color, which is our supportive color to influence contrast in the overall look. It's usually one to two levels within the foundation color. So our foundation color makes up 75%. Our anchor color influences contrast. It's usually within one to two levels. And then we have our accent colors, which can be a highlight or low light, and they are used to emphasize colors and draw the eye. So these don't have to be within one to two levels. They can be a platinum blonde if you're a level four. They can be a level three if you're a level seven. They're something to help draw the eye and create depth and dimension. And they will create a lot of contrast. So let's go into our Hotel California um, inspiration. And I'm literally gonna read this to you word for word because it really spoke to me and I'll tell you why in just a second. So, our inspiration is, historically California has served as a muse for all areas of the artistic community, including music, film, cuisine, fashion, and style. Known as the Golden State, California has become a global melting pot of artistry and inspiration. And that speaks to me because, being from the Midwest, around here, we're kind of the last to get the new and exciting things. So you know us stylists, we always have tabloids and fun little gossipy mags in the salon, we're always seeing celebrities with the newest trends. So Hotel California and that inspiration speaks to me because it's literally saying what I just said. Being the last to get the new and exciting lead of the artistic community, California gets it first, we kind of get it last. So California is really my muse for things. It's really what's come out first, what's, what's getting what's coming out first. And California is just really exciting to me, it's a super trendy place. So Hotel California is a perfect new artistic collection for us because it really helps to keep us on par with what's new and exciting. So let's go over our Malibu Tides collection. And actually, we'll talk about application elements first. So do we all know what a weave, slice, and skip slice is? And have we used them? I'm going to assume yes, because getting out of beauty school, you use a weave and a slice no matter what. To me, a skip slice is kind of a new thing and a, a Kenra thing. Skip slice is more of, I call it like a chunk highlight. We call it a skip slice in the Kenra world. It's a skip slice is, say this is a slice, drop one of these pieces out, and at the end of the day, you have a skip slice. So it's not as bold as a slice would be, and it's not as broken as a weave would be, but a skip slice 
creates more dimension and lets foundation or accent, I'm sorry, anchor color break through. So our focus today is the Malibu Tides and Hollywood Allure techniques. These techniques couple foil placement with balayage application. And that's really, really big because we're kind of just getting started in the balayage world around here. And coupling foil with that will ease your clients into the balayage world. And it'll help you really get more comfortable with it before you really dive all the way into balayage, which most of us are probably all the way in, but some of our clients aren't completely comfortable with it yet. So let's go over Malibu Tides. This is a pretty easy one. On your little booklet that should be at your sheet, at your seat, it's got, let's see here, three, four, three, excuse me, three formulas. And in my, in my leader's guide, it says five. So these are completely customizable as far to as far as you really want to go with them. So to section the Malibu Tides model, you want to create a square from either temple to temple or ear to ear. You want to go straight back and then square it off on the back of her head. You'll end up with a very square shape. Within that square, we're going to make four triangles. So basically split it across each side of the square. And I know that was just really, really confusing, but our little application guides help a lot. <laughs> Zone one, which is the rest of the head, will be your, your foundation color, which like I said, is 75% of the total color application. In zone two, Okay, so within the triangle, you will apply our foundation color to the new growth in the left and right triangles. So if you cut those triangle, if you cut the square into four triangles, you have a left and a right and a front and a, um, excuse me, a back and a front. In the left and right triangles, you're going to apply our foundation color only at the new growth area. In the Within those, you're also going to create a pivoting skip slice foil placement, diffusing formula A into formula B. Formula B would be our anchor color, which is going to create some dimension, and it's also going to create kind of a melted or a diffused color look. And then apply, again, formula A into the front and back triangles just on the new growth and then you're going to create a balayage technique in the front and back triangles also so basically you're applying formula A to the whole head just on the new growth in the left and right triangles you're going to be doing a foil skip slice yes skip slice foil through these these side triangles in the front triangles, you're going to be painting, the front and back triangles rather, you're going to be painting um, the accent color onto the foundation color. So that's where you get the three tones. And then, so that's formula A, formula B, and formula C, formula B again. So I guess there's really no accent color, there's just an anchor color. And then at the bowl, you can do a glaze or a toner as needed to get more of an ashy result, more of a pearl result, whatever the case may be. So Malibu Tides is pretty simple because it's literally breaking the head into a square, painting the front and back parts of the square, and foiling the sides of the square. I think that's pretty simple. In the Hollywood Allure collection, we are going to be doing a circular section on the top of the head. Now, in this little technical guide, it shows the circle starting right here at the part line. I haven't had a lot of success with that. I actually like to bring the circle back off the part line about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. And of course, it depends on where they part and how they, how they do their hair. If you put it right here at the part line, they're going to end up with maybe a foil or a painted piece that's right here where they would pull their hair up, like mine is right now. And you would have a pretty stark line right there. So I would back it up a little bit and keep it more natural. So apply formula A, which is again our foundation color, 
to everything outside the circle. Outside the section. And then outside of the circle that we are using, we are going to balayage some pieces that are basically right in this part of the head. So assume the circle is right here where my bun is. Right outside of the bun, we're going to work in a diagonal kind of forward and we're only going to do about four lines of painted skip slice or slice pieces. These I would probably just do skip slice. You don't want to do anything too heavy, especially right here, because when they pull up, you don't want anything to look streaky to see through. So you would use formula B in these side sections and then formulas A and C in a slice and skip slice pivoting around the circle up top here. And then formula B will go in between those foils. So let me just backtrack a little here. This is rough. Create a circular section at the top of the head. So assume my little bun is the circular section we just created. Outside of that circular section, everything's going to be formula A or our foundation color, except for a skip slice technique that we're going to paint on with formula B right here. So these pieces we're going to do like four lines of a, of a skip slice balayage application just right through here which this creates especially on a longer haired model this will create just like a peekaboo effect of some really pretty pops and then within this this circular section that we created we're going to alternate a slice and skip slice with formulas A and C so our foundation color and an accent color and in between the foils of the skip slice, we are going to apply formula B, which is our anchor color. We'll process that for the required amount of time, and then we'll glaze all over using another formula to really give it whatever contrast, not contrast, excuse me, whatever glazed effect we're looking for, depending on the color we're using with this technique. So let's formulate according to our five easy steps to color formulation, which are Determine the natural level of the hair. Determine the desired level of the hair. Decide which volume you need to use to get from the natural level to the desired level. Take into effect, into account, I'm sorry, the amount of gray that this client has in their hair. And then lastly, determine the underlying pigment. And if you are lifting more than two levels, it's extremely important to determine the underlying pigment in this client's hair because we will need to decide, excuse me, to decide if this underlying pigment will add to the color formula that we're doing or if it will be, need to be neutralized. So, natural level, desired level, volume of developer to get you there, percentage of gray because that will also influence your volume of developer, and your underlying pigment because our accent colors are a lot of times going to be lightener. We need to take into consideration what we may pull up with that lightener and what we need to do to either correct or enhance what the lightener may pull up. Okay, so now that we have our client, or excuse me, our model proper, processing, let's walk through our foundation, foundation elements, which is Kenra, again, another signature guide to styling. It unites inspiration with product application and styling techniques. Foundation elements are prep, layer, and finish. And by this I mean prep is anything that prepares the hair for styling. So it's our shampoos, our conditioners, leave-in conditioners, anything like that. Our, oh, excuse me, also dry shampoo fits into that, that prep category. <laughs> Let's go into our layer category, which is what, I don't know how to hit pause, so my puppy's going to have to wait. So our layer category is what provides hold, changes the shape, or alters the texture. This would be like our blow dry spray, our perfect blowout serum. This would be our thickening glaze, our texture wax, anything like that is our layering product. And finally, our finishing product, which is um, which helps provide additional hold control or shine. So our shine spray is a finishing product. Any of our hairsprays are a finishing product. And we have one product that can float from prep to layer to finish, which is actually 
our daily defense oil. So prep, layer, and finish is a really easy way to think, okay, do I have this client styled properly to walk out into whatever humidity the Midwest is going to give her? And then finally, let's go over our color support products. <clears throat> First, we have our pre-pigment color creams, which are designed for use in color corrective services. Um, I'm sorry, my dog is distracting me so much right now. Um, they're for either before a permanent or a demi-permanent service. They're ideal for achieving two or more levels darker than the existing level. They are formulated to mix one-to-one -one with water processed at 10 minutes at room temperature. So they're available in three intermixable shades to meet your color corrective needs. First we have red, which is meant to be used when coloring red or violet shades, or any of our natural shades levels one to three. Then we have copper, when, which should be used when using any of our copper shades, and when coloring medium natural hair from levels three to six, and then finally gold, which <clears throat> could be used with any golden tones, like our gold beiges, for example, and when coloring back using light natural shades, level six to eight. So to determine, excuse me, to determine the proper pre-pigment coloring cream we would need, it's important to kind of recognize the underlying pigments that you're gonna need to fill back in when you're coloring back from light to dark. These are meant to give you more of a natural look. If you're wanting more of a bold look, say you're coloring from a light to a dark red, use strictly the red. If you're coloring from a light to a medium copper, use strictly the copper. Mixing them together will give you a very natural shade for a tint back. And finally, our Prosti Equalizing Spray, which is something that helps to ensure even absorption of color or product into hair that is maybe a little bit porous. It could be high porosity, it could be uneven porosity. It could just be that this client's hair is, is semi-damaged on its own and it's been lightened a few times. Porosity Equalizing Spray helps to fill in that cuticle and really make their hair take better to any color application you could be doing. It's designed for use prior to a Kenner Color Permanent or a Demi-Permanent Service. So, now that our model is done, let's go ahead and actually, let's maybe recommend what she should be using as far as product goes, and then we'll talk about those. Go ahead and hand them in to me, and we'll talk about them. Um, other than that, I, if we have any questions, I would be more than happy to answer them, but I look forward to hopefully the hearing that this video went well. Sorry my dog was barking in the background. <laughs>